Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about a pretty typical day for us. Now on any given day, we can be working on from one to three jobs usually. The list we have is usually 30 to 50 jobs that are ready to go. Or we either have to go and form them up and get them ready, but they're sitting there waiting for us. So let me know what your day's like down in the comments. If it's similar to ours, how many jobs are you working on per day? What kinds of jobs are you working on? And we'll see you in the video. Now my day usually starts from 4.30 to quarter or five. I'm getting up, getting going. And then what I do is I turn the TV on or I turn the computer on and I look at the weather. Um, I, got it, I live right about there in Maine, right a little bit south of Augusta. And the work area is usually 50 miles north, 50 miles south, so about a 100-mile radius. My, my drink I like is uh, cold brew coffee, guys, in the morning. What's your favorite drink? Let me know down in the comments when you're headed to work. But we typically, you know, we don't like to work much more than an hour or so away from the job. We're usually arriving on site between 6 and 6.30 like this. You know, we live kind of in the city, kind of out in the rural area. We work in both um, but pretty much we have concrete ordered for 7 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, every single day of the month, except for Saturday and Sundays. We try not to work weekends if we don't have to. I used to work weekends a lot when I was younger. I'd work seven days a week before I had kids. Uh, but now that I got kids, I like doing coaching. I coach baseball, soccer, basketball, and all that stuff. So we try to reserve our weekends for the family a little bit more now that we're older versus when we was younger. We got Javi helping us today, as you can see in the hat. Javi's been on a couple other videos. He lives right down by this job. He doesn't live too far away. And Harvey helps the foundation contractor, who is the one that's paying us today. So the guy that did the foundation gym is uh, subbing out the floor to us. He doesn't like doing his own floors. He just likes doing the walls. And that's pretty typical of a lot of concrete foundation contractors in Maine. They, they don't like doing flat work. They just like doing the walls. So... They hire out and they sub out the floors to guys like me. And there's there's not a lot of guys around that do flat work here that are just really good that you don't have to babysit and don't have to worry about. So that's one reason why we're so busy. A lot of guys like to hire us to do flat work. Um, because they, they, I mean, they pretty much know and they trust us and they know it's going to come out right. That's one thing about concrete. You can't mess it up. you got one chance to do it right and that's pretty much it. Once you mess it up, it's just the repair is, a, is just crazy so we're doing about a it's about a 44 by 28 garage here today pretty typical pour for us we did the house here I don't know a month or so ago they didn't have the garage ready at that time so we come back to do the garage on a job like this and we'll get the concrete poured you know it's a it's a pretty typical pour four inches thick using 3500 psi with fiber mesh um, Jim, he's right there on the right. He's the one that, that specs the concrete on his job. So he actually figures the concrete and orders it for his jobs. All the other jobs that I do, I do all the figuring and ordering on and all the scheduling. So Jim just calls me and asks me, hey, Mike, you know, when I got this floor ready. When can you do it? I give him a day, and then we shoot for that day unless the rain messes it up or something. But we're usually pretty close to the day we talk about. Now we have we have concrete on the books for every single day. So the batch man, what he does, he writes our name in every single day, at, at least two weeks to three weeks in advance for every single day. Two trucks every day. And then if I know, depending on what job we're doing, because like I said earlier, there's, we have 30 to 50 jobs on the list. And some are ready, some need to be prepped and get ready, like I'm going to show you later in the video where, where I'm going. Um, and some, you know, they're just pulling the panels off the walls and they still need to be backfilled and they might be a couple weeks out, but all those jobs are on the list. So the batch man knows that we're going to be pouring concrete every day. So he just, he just writes us in for a couple trucks. And then if I need more than that, I've got to give him enough advance notice, you know, so he can add a third truck or a fourth truck, whatever we need. And then if I don't need two trucks for whatever reason, you know, I call them and tell them, hey, I only need one today. So it's a pretty good working relationship we have. It makes it makes our job a little bit easier knowing that, hey, I at least have two trucks on the books, you know, and I don't have to 
I don't have to call them every single minute and, and hope and beg for trucks. I know some of you guys probably have a hard time scheduling concrete because the concrete companies are so busy. They just have a hard time getting everybody. So we're getting this garage floor put. It had, uh, I think it had two or three inches slope from the back to the front. That's why we're screening it by hand today and not using the power screed. We don't typically power screed stuff that has slopes. We like use doing it by hand because we can get we can get things really, really accurate without the vibration just by hand screeding like this. This is how I was taught to screed, you know, when I was 15, so f almost f over 40 years ago. This is exactly the way I was taught to screed like this. I've been doing this a long, long time. Now, Jim is here. He just showed up just, just because he likes to show up and it's pretty close by for him. So he... Uh, and Javi's going to be working and helping him today, I think. So he's, Javi showed up. He lives pretty close by. We like to help each other because we're, you know, we're good friends too, not just co-workers. And what we're going to do after this is we're going to help Jim pour some sauna tubes out back that the builder installed. So we'll help him wheel those around back in the sand. And just, you know, he helps us and we help him and it works all up pretty good that way. All right, so same truck, just finishing up. Got the floor done. Now we're just moving them over, getting them a little closer to those wheelbarrows so we can go down and wheel those sauna tubes. Perfect. Go so take a look at those. Generally, those are down about four feet, at least four feet, unless there's some type of ledge under there or something but I don't know there's quite a bit of rock around here so we'll get a wheelbarrow on the sand all the way over to here to each one of these that one's definitely four feet yeah these are down these are down below the frost there's quite a few of them Yeah, that one's that one's right borderline four feet. But that one's right about four feet. No footings, just down below the frost, just enough to put a deck on. There's probably going to be a big deck coming off off the back of this house. See, it's going to have a bunch of windows there. I don't know. The view's okay here. <laughs> Not great, but it's okay. Well, we'll see if he's got enough left on. I think I think Jim, the guy we're working for today, the foundation guy, figured the concrete, so hopefully he figured enough to finish these two. So the builder is the one that installed the sawn tubes. That's kind of his deal. It had really nothing to do with Jim Russ. He just figured that while we had concrete here, we could fill them. That way he didn't have to mix anything by hand. So that's all we're doing with these. He put them where he needed them, he backfilled them, he did everything. So that, this is all the builder's deal here. We don't we don't typically do too many sauna tubes, um, but hey, it is what it is. We'll help them out since we already got concrete here. We're just going to fill them up like that, level them off, smooth them off, clean up around the outside of them, and then that's it. You know, we'll be done. So here's, here's the second job I'm on. This was about 20, 25 minutes away from that other job right there. I left Luke and Darren on that because the sun was coming up. It was getting really hot, and that floor is going to dry really fast. So the deal here is this: these guys are putting up this pole barn. They're putting up the walls today. They're, they're going to be getting trusses up today, and they need to get some posts set on this patio right here. So I gotta, I gotta get this done. This was actually on a Friday. I'm doing this. We're going to pour this on a Monday, so they'll be able to get these posts on it, you know, later in the week, so it won't hold them up. This was kind of a last minute thing. I didn't really know about this until a couple days ago. So I'm trying to squeeze it in and, and get it done into an already kind of overbooked schedule. But this is typically what we'll do. I'll go, we'll pour concrete. I'll go get other jobs ready for the rest of the day. It could be one job like this. It could be two, it could be three. I got another one I'm going to right after this. So make sure you, you hang out and see what that one is. But on this one, I had to form up around the outside of that frost wall and I didn't have any 2x12s. We got two house and garage 
slabs set up. Both are 4,000 square feet apiece. So all my 2x12 forms are on those two jobs, over 800 lineal feet. And I had all kinds of other lumber sitting at the shop. So I didn't want to go out and just buy new 2x12s just to make it, you know, a little bit easier. So I'm just improvising. I'm tap conning on a 2x4 down there. And I tap con that on at the height I needed. So when I put my 2x10 on, it was right at grade. So basically those two are acting as my 2x12. And then I'll just, I'll brace them, uh, screw them together. Then I'll brace them. They'll already be at grade. The print on this one, the, the text called for just a six inch slab uh, fiber meshing at 4,000 PSI. I got to bend over those rebar uprights, get those bent down into the slab. And then there's going to be a double row of rebar around the outside perimeter. So I'll bring the double row of rebar back with us when we come to pour. But it'll be, I got one door back there on the right. You can see that I got to put a form in that. I didn't have, I'll bring a 2x12 for that. I have a four footer at home. So that's all I'll have left to do when we come back to pour. This is probably, you know, another 15 minutes of work. I'll get all those bent over. That That's my rebar bender tool. That's a really good tool to have to bend rebar. I'll put that, I'll put a link for that down in the comments if you guys want to check that out. That makes it really easy for one guy to bend rebar. So once I get it bent over, I just need to tap it down so it stays below grade. I basically just whack it once with a sledgehammer right there and it's good. But I was on, I was actually probably on this job right here for a couple hours. Hey guys, so on this job, we got a stamp concrete patio we're putting in here and a hot tub pad all in one. So that's going to come out eight feet, come across eight feet. And then we're going to curve this form a little bit to meet the foundation right here. And then we're going to butt up against those two sides. We'll keep the concrete out from going under the deck just a little bit with some ISO strip that I got right here. Um, but this is what we're here to do. I'm going to just get up some forms for today and then when we come back, we'll do the rebar four inches of concrete and then we're going to stamp it ashlar slate now this is the third job we work i'm working on today and the, we do a lot of stamp concrete work we get calls for stamp concrete work every day i have to turn down a lot but you know we'll we'll this is for a regular customer again it's a guy i've been working for for over 20 years 30 years so we're out, I'm out here today and they got the hot tub coming. We got to get the pad in so they can get the hot tub set. It's getting late in the season. Um, you know, you guys know, hurry, hurry, hurry. It's gotta, we got to get it done. So I'm out here. Once I get the forms up, then it's a lot easier to put things on the schedule because without the forms, you know, it takes time to do the forming. You guys know. But once you get the forms up and get things set, then it's pretty easy to get it on the schedule and get things done it's a lot easier anyway i feel so i'm gonna you know we'll have the little square pot over there where the hot tub is then the patio area they just want a little bit of curve in front here i'll get these all set this is going to be i think it's a little under 400 square feet it's going to be stamped with asher slate we'll put gray color in the concrete i'll put a mat of rebar in it or maybe wire mesh whatever i bring back with me and then you know this job will be sitting here ready to go and then we can just schedule it and get it on the schedule this is something that two of us could come do after we pour our first job in the morning or I we could pour this first thing in the morning I could leave Luke and Darren I could go set up some more work but this is pretty typical day for us so again let me know down in the comments what's a typical day for you guys I, I really appreciate you guys watching thanks for supporting the channel and we'll see you on the next one